Hi everyone, this is Subramani and uh, today we are going to see the top famous DevOps tools of 2019. So recently, uh, around a couple of days back, I got a chance to attend the State of DevOps Tools 2019 conference online. And uh, once after the conference, they have published a book called uh, State of DevOps Tools 2019 with the famous tools and technologies that has been famous across the world in 2019 in the DevOps space. So I thought, okay, let us make some videos across it so that everyone knows like what are the famous tools and technologies in the DevOps in current trend. So once after this video is done, I will also publish a link to that book so that everyone can have a look into the uh, different DevOps tools that is we are covering in this PPT and the introduction of all those tools in that PDF. So come, let's start. As you all know, the DevOps starts with the first and the foremost uh, technology called as source code management. So some people call it as source code management and some people call it as version control management but the underlying concept remains the same. So this is mainly used to version control your code and to see the history of versions and it can be used during the rollback process. And the most famous tools in 2019 is GitHub, Bitbucket and Perforce Helix. So <coughs> In this, if you see, my personal favorite would be GitHub because it's quite easy to use and it's free and <clears throat> it can be used online without any software being that is downloaded and you don't need to do anything. You just need to go to github.io slash and you just need to create your credentials and log in and that's how we can use it. And if you are going to use a public repository, then it's absolutely free. Whereas if you are going to use a private repository, then it's $7 per month per private repository. And the next famous one is Bitbucket, so which is an Atlassian product and it is also quite easy to use. So go ahead and try it and then let me know your comments. The next famous one is, as you all know, it's the ICD. And if you see a new one called ARA, what is that ARA? Have you heard about it? No. Okay, so this is a famous... Uh, what you call term that has been introduced in late 2018s and it is quite been famous across 2019s. So it is called as an application release automation. So people call it as an application release automation because it includes the whole CICD pipelines including a database and the whole process that is being used to get an application up and running. So that is that's an application release automation. As you all know what is CI CD? CI CD is CI is a continuous integration and CD can be as a continuous delivery or a continuous deployment. And the most famous tools across these areas are Jenkins, Circle CI, Travis CI, Bamboo, Codeship, Spinnaker, Team City, and ZBI Labs. In which if you see our personal favorite is Jenkins, because as you all know, Jenkins is quite famous for more than three, four years till now. That is because it is an open source and it has around 2000 plus plugins available to use. So it gets integrated with all the tools and technologies and languages and everything. And anyone can install this Jenkins quite easily and they can use it. And I'm preparing a separate video on Jenkins and I will be uploading it in after some time. So other than that, if you see another easy one as ZBI Labs and Bamboo. So these are all also the quite easy tools that is available in the market. So whichever famous you or company is preferring, you can just use it and let me know your comments. The next one is again a new technology called as value stream management. Have you heard about it? <coughs> if not, no issues. So this value stream management is again being famous from late 2018s and the name is nothing new as you all know it is an old one called application lifecycle management so people pre previously called this as ALMs now they call it as VSM so which is value stream management which is nothing but in a software development lifecycle if you would have seen it is from the planning uh, coding development testing and maintenance so all these five stages is being done in one single tool and that is called as an application lifecycle management tool and now here it is called as a value stream management because it is providing some value to your organization and value to your coding so that is called as a value stream management so the famous tools in the value stream management is GitLab, CollabNet, Plutra, Desktop and Azure DevOps in which my personal favorite is Azure DevOps because I have been using Azure DevOps for the last three years and it's absolutely amazing tool from the Microsoft because 
since previously it is called as an VSTS and TFS. So the TFS previous versions, if you see, it gets quite nicely integrated with the Microsoft tools and technologies. But now they have changed their concept and this Microsoft tool can be integrated into any language, any tool and any area. So any cloud or on-prem or whatever it is, you can quite easily use this. And this is also absolutely free for the first five users. Go ahead and try it. The next famous one is GitLab. Again, this has its own repository and CI CD pipelines tracking and monitoring and everything. So go ahead and try these things. <coughs> the next one is again, the name has been changed. Infrastructure automation and management. Uh, what is this new name? Okay, so previously it is called as a configuration management tool. But now the name has been changed to infrastructure automation and management, which is nothing but it's the same. But uh, <coughs> as per state of DevOps, they have changed the name from configuration management to the infrastructure automation because that gives much uh, uh, worthy to the tool name. And the famous ones are again Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Solstack, Terraform and Packer. So uh, I will be providing a separate video on the differences between Ansible, Chef, Puppet and Solstack and a separate video on Terraform as well. But now let us see what is this. So uh, there are a lot of confusions between Ansible and Terraform. Okay, so what is that? So Terraform mainly applies on the control panel and Ansible mainly applies on the data plan. So what is this control plane and data plane? Okay, <coughs> let me give a small example. <coughs> Control plane is nothing but you installing your own machine like a CPU, RAM and everything that is a control plane. And data plane is nothing but inside the machine you are going to create some users, you are going to provision some softwares, you are going to give him some permissions and everything. So that is a data plane. So combination of this Ansible and Terraform can be used as a whole infrastructure automation. So that is what it is. And what is a new name called Packer? Packer is nothing but it is used to create an own AMIs. What is an AMI? AMI is an Amazon machine image. It is nothing but an OS. So people can download an OS from Amazon. Like for example, if you are downloading Windows 10, what they can do, they can customize the own Windows 10 by installing some Java or .NET and then again they can create a new OS with that customized OS and they can upload it to an Amazon marketplace. So that whenever people wants to <coughs> download your customized OS, they can download it and they can extend their code by not installing any new softwares because you have already installed the softwares and you have provided an OS. So people need to download it and they just straight away need to code accordingly. So that is the use of the packer. Coming to the next one again, the most famous ones which is serverless. So nowadays, uh, wherever you go, people are asking for a serverless because they don't want to invest more on the money and other things. So uh, what is this serverless? Serverless is nothing but as the name indicates, you don't need any server, you don't need any hardware or you don't need any software or whatever it is. If you are going to write a program and that program, if you submit it to an Amazon or a, uh, Azure, automatically they will provision their own servers and everything and they will do other work on your behalf. That is called as a serverless. The most famous ones are Amazon Lambda, uh, Azure Functions, Google Cloud Functions and IBM Cloud Functions in which I have primarily used this Lambda on Azure Functions and I see Azure Functions are quite famous because it has more UI and the coding is quite less and it is quite easy to use. So when you get a time, have a look into it. <coughs> the, again, the, mes, the most expected ones in 2019 is DevOps for databases. Usually when I see last year, uh, the CI CD pipelines will mainly be for the applications or for the infrastructure. But I haven't seen a lot of CI CDs on the database side. But in 2019, they are insisting this CI CD for the database as well because we don't need to have a separate pipeline for a database and it has to get integrated into an application because as a whole, an application is front end, back end, and everything combined. So if you have a separate CI CD for a front end and if you have a separate CI CD for a back end, it doesn't make any sense. So they want to have an end-to-end -end CI CD pipeline with the both front end and the back end. So that is the DevOps for the database one. So uh, the most famous tools on this DevOps for databases is Datical, DB Master, Delphix, Redgate, and SSDT. So in which my personal favorite would be SSDT and Redgate because Redgate is obviously an enterprise one and SSDT is a Microsoft product. So this SSDT have personally used it. So which is nothing but you don't need to have a SQL Server enterprise version for and uh, 
uh, Microsoft, you can get this extension in, installed on your Visual Studio 2017 or 2019, and your Visual Studio becomes an SQL Server database. So you can in, you can write your own SQL queries and everything, and you can automatically get integrated with the application, and you can check into the code, and you can do a CI/CD pipeline. So if you have a time, try to look into this SSDT. It creates a DAC pack file and you can install that DAC pack file to a particular environment and the rollback is also quite easy on this. Again, <laughs> the most famous ones like everyone knows it, which is container management. So this container management has been quite famous from 2017, 2018 and now it is very, very famous in 2019 because people, uh, wherever you go as a DevOps engineer, people will ask only two things. Do you know Docker? Do you know Kubernetes? So why is that? Because Wherever you go, they wanted to club their environments or club their application into a container so that it reduces the complexity and it reduces the overall uh, network and interfaces and everything because the underlying infrastructure can be shared across different containers and uh, the chaos will be less if you use in containers. So the most famous container technologies are Docker, Kubernetes, Mosphere, AKS, ACR. Amazon Elastic Container Service, Amazon Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes, Google Kubernetes Engine and Google Container Service. The last six is nothing but the cloud provided solutions which means you don't need to have a separate software or a system to be installed. When you have your Docker images or when you create an image you can automatically submit it to the cloud and the cloud will take care of its own provisioning and uh, clustering and everything. You don't need to worry about it and cloud takes care of its logging and monitoring as well. But for the first you need to install the software on your machine and you need to provide your own cluster formations and logging and everything so when you get a chance have a look into it and again my personal favorite would be docker kubernetes and aks and acr because azure provided once i have used it quite some time and it's very easy to use so when you get a chance have a look into it and when you find something else is quite easy please do come and let me try and uh, extend my feedbacks about it on that same Again, the new one, if you see uh, the alerting technologies, which means previously this alerting would not be uh, as a separate one. They will be integrating it into a login. So people call it as login, monitoring, or alerting. But now they have introduced this as a separate uh, area of alerting because uh, as per recent uh, conference on the state of DevOps, what people is mentioning is that even though the logging and monitoring is working fine, what happens when something happens during a midnight or when something happens during a weekend? So we are not getting an alerts for it. So even though if you are getting a mail, so you cannot be monitoring the mails 24 hours in it. So that is the reason they brought this as a new and the most important uh, concept in 2019, which means in your pipeline, you should have a separate segment for alerting apart from the logging and monitoring so that when something happens, it gets automatically notified to the people via mobile or any other modes of technology in which people will be really alert not on the emails. So in this the most famous technologies are pager duty, it drops and ops duty. And uh, <coughs> this is my personal favorite would be pager duty because I have used it quite some time and uh, people can have this quite easily and they will be using it across all the areas and it gets integrated with all the tools like service now it service management jira and everything and uh, it also gets escalated easily by your own workflow so if you are calling your representative and if he is not picking up the call automatically it gets connected to the other people whom you are providing on the workflow area so have a look into it and then let me know again <coughs> the most famous of all these areas is DevSecOps. Why? Because uh, this DevSecOps started on 2017 and then uh, in 2018 March I have attended another state of conference on DevOps in which people are mentioning like this DevOps uh, things or the DevSecOps has to be integrated into a pipeline. But uh, they are not sure how to integrate into a pipeline. But on the late 2019 of uh, sorry on the late 2018 November they started to use these technologies along with the DevOps CIC pipeline. And only then the shift left concept came into the picture. So what is shift left concept? Shift left is nothing but starting from the coding, you should be thinking on the security aspect. So that from the coding itself, if you are eliminating the vulnerabilities during the build compilation,
application packaging and deploying, you don't need to worry about it because on the early stage itself, you are avoiding all the vulnerabilities and security threats. So, for example, if you see here, the most famous tools across this devs, cops, are signal sciences, white source, aqua security, immuno, veracode, continuum security. So, if you take this veracode green, <laughs> there is a plugin available for Eclipse and .NET. So, if you install that plugin, Starting from the coding itself, it tells you if there is any security threats or vulnerability threats. For example, if you are providing any username, password or a host name, it will alert you like this is a vulnerability threat across. So from the coding, you can try to avoid the security threats and everything and this you can integrate into a pipeline as well. And once after the Docker image is created, before uploading the Docker images into the Docker registry or a container registry, you can scan the Docker images using this aqua security. Uh, tool so that it scans the Docker images and it tells what is the security threats being there on the Docker image. If you feel it is good to upload, you can upload. Else, yes, you can create your own Docker image again. And uh, if you are using any open source uh, coding from the GitHub or any other uh, tools, so you can scan it using this white source bolt. So there are a lot of options available. So take a look into these DevSecOps more seriously and integrate it into your pipeline if you have not done so. <clears throat> Again, a new name. What is this? Application performance management. So, uh, previously they called this as logging and monitoring, but now they have changed the name to application performance management. Why? As the name logging and monitoring, it seems to be a generic one, but uh, application performance management is a more suitable one because this is going to uh, scan your applications and this is going to scan the performance of the application and this is going to scan your infrastructure and everything so which is an underlying basement for your application so that is why this name they have introduced in the state of ops 2019 so the most famous ones are dynamics application insights datadog dynatrace extra hop ca nagios splunk and neuralic in which if you see my personal favorite would be splunk and datadog because they have an extensive ui and it is very very easy to use and you can create your own customized dashboards reports and alertings and you can schedule it every day to get your automatic dashboard reports uh, coming to you or your senior management and the next uh, famous ones are app dynamics so with the help of the app dynamics you can see uh, different interfaces uh, connections like you go or database or front end or back end so if there is an application downtime or if there is a failure in the application you can clearly see where the failure is happening and why the failure is happening, where is the connection down. So this app dynamics show you an extensive workflow between these applications and it is very, very easy to scan and monitor on it. So have a try on these tools and then let me know how you feel about it. So that is pretty much about all these tools. If you want to know more about uh, each and every tool, I will be providing you this uh, PDF on State of DevOps Tools 2019. In this, uh, it gives you an pretty much overview of all the tools so these are the tools that i have provided on the ppt so when you click on any tool like for example if you click on this application management so it takes you to that segment and here you can see the list of all the tools so app dynamics what is app dynamics what is the introduction of it what is data dog? what is the introduction of it and uh, what is dynatrace what is the introduction of it so each and every tools introduction will be given over here and if you are comfortable with the introduction and if you are comfortable like okay this uh, tool will be useful for my environment you can go ahead and browse about these tools and start learning it installing it and if you wanted to know more about any of the tools just ping me on the comments and i will try to prepare a separate video on the same uh thank you for your support and thank you for listening till now